What we do here is go back, 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 back. The block is left hook. So tail of the tape, you can see they're both beyond the age of 30. Espinoza maybe even beyond the age of 31. We're not entirely certain. Half inch height advantage for McKinney. Very similar in reach. Weighed in at or within a pound of the 126 pound limit. Tonight, Espinoza weighs 138. And Kennedy McKinney weighs 139 as we put the scales in their dressing rooms. Rules of the bout with Harold Letterman. Once again, the Luisito Espinoza Kennedy McKinney fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using those unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, thank you, Harold. Kennedy McKinney's career as a musician ended with a little snare drum playing in senior high school, but he has gone on by his own claim to become the greatest boxer in the history of Memphis, Tennessee. He loves Memphis, his hometown, and after a stint of living in Las Vegas, lives back in Memphis now where he's starting a trucking business. Calls this the most important fight of his life. I'm sure he has said that more on more than one occasion in the past, but it's a way of pumping himself up like a true professional because at the end of this rainbow could be Prince Ahmed. 1988 American Olympic team should have had at least four gold medal winners, but Roy Jones, as you know, was robbed. Still, three Americans, won gold in Seoul, Kennedy McKinney, Ray Mercer, and Andrew Maynard. A closer look at King Kennedy. There you see the former junior featherweight champion, that's 122 pounds. Been idle for almost a year while waiting for Hamed. And gold medal in Seoul. Luisito Espinosa first carved out prominence in the sport as a bantamweight. Ruled as a bantamweight in the Far East for several years left the Philippines, fought out of Japan for a while, then went back and fought in the Philippines. Now he has moved here to the United States because he says there is no longer any money for boxers in his native land of the Philippines. For him, it's negative money. He still hasn't collected a $130,000 purse for his next to last fight. The government was supposed to put up the money, but we've all heard of the Asian economic crisis. They didn't have $130,000. Closer look at Kennedy, I mean at Luisito Espinoza. There you see the former Bantamweight champion. Seven defenses of his belt. And he once defended it in front of 300,000 fans in Manila. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions on this one. Ladies and gentlemen from Fantasy Springs Casino here in Indio, California, this is the main event of the evening, brought to you by America Presents, in association with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Along with Murad Muhammad, Eminem Sports, and main events, this is 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Featherweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Chairman Ernest A. Wiener, Vice Chairman, Dr. Tirso Del Junco Jr., Executive Officer Rob Lynch, Physicians at Ringside, Dr. Paul Wallace, and Dr. Howard Bear. The timekeeper at the bell is Mike Millsap. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor at Ringside for the WBC, Frank Quill. The three judges assigned scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Lou Filippo, Bob Logiste, and Terry O'Connor. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, working for the 113th time in a world title bout, Hall of Famer Marty Dankin. And now, from Fantasy Springs Casino here in Indio, California, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, trimmed with gold, 
He weighs 126 pounds. In 1988, he captured Olympic gold and now, as a professional, his record stands at 33 victories, 19 by knockout, with three losses and one draw. He comes to us from Memphis, Tennessee. Here is the challenger, former three-time world champion, Kennedy, the King, Mick Kinney. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue and gold. He weighs 125 pounds and brings a professional record of 43 victories. 22 of those by knockout with seven defeats. Tonight, he makes the seventh defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, from Manila in the Philippines, presenting the reigning and defending WBC featherweight champion of the world, Luisito Espinosa. Everybody out but one person. Everybody out but one person. Everyone out but one person. Okay. Turn around, turn around, Kenny. You know your responsibilities. I've told you what mine are. Let's both do our jobs. Luis Espinoza has been stopped three times in his career. Kennedy McKinney knows it. Can he do anything about it? That's why he wants to go forward and land that big right hand. Watch out for headbutts. Espinoza has won two of his last three by technical win. Headbutts have marred at least a half dozen Luisito Espinoza fights. Kenny McKinney, for his part, would like to keep Espinoza at range where he can work behind his jab and try to set up his big right hand. Espinoza, a relatively slow starter. Although there's a left hook that lands right away. Excuse me, Luisito, I didn't mean to offend you. Very smart, boxer. Let's nice take a look at his opponent first, see what his opponent has to offer, then he throws his shots. I think McKinney may be trying to set him up, trap him some way into throwing that left hook more often. He took that in a very calm way. It's his best punch, Espinoza. Blocked by McKinney. That time, first one landed. This time, McKinney had the right hand up to block it. Espinoza trying to get low and fire wide shots at the body. They try to throw the shots at the body to set up the head shots, like he just did with that left foot. Interesting matchup between a guy who wants to set up his right hand, McKinney, and a guy who wants to set up his left hook, Espinosa. Espinosa's landing the right hand too, though. McKinney with a right hand to the body and a left to the body, and he lands an uppercut. But Espinoza counters and drives Kennedy back, then turns around and pounds him against the ropes as Espinoza has stunned McKinney in the first round. And that hook hurt McKinney bad. Yep. But he's weathering the storm pretty good. And now Kennedy has tasted Espinoza's power, as we say. Yeah, but this is very smart by Espinoza. He saw it throw a barrage of punches at McKinney, and he backed back and gathered himself once he saw that McKinney was back together. So Espinoza showing you his vast experience. He's been a pro for 14 years. First professional fight on his 17th birthday. Down goes McKinney as a right hand followed by a left hook. Landed on the chin. This has been more than a taste. Jim. This has been a buffet. <laughs> McKinney bleeding from the mouth. Espinoza left hook, left hook. Trying to finish McKinney in the final seconds of round one. Now the right hand lands. And a slow starting Kennedy McKinney trying to fight back as round one comes to a close. All those 
big punches are results of those big body shots early. You know what I'm saying? Give me a time. Take one time. One time. Give me one. Huh? Give me one. 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 Give me here we can look, take a look at the knockdown. That big right hand is what sent McKinney off balance. A soft tap of the left finished the job that the right had started. Looking for the left, caught the right. We talked about the 343 days off. McKinney looked rusty to you in that first round, Roy? Not necessarily rusty, but the big body shots that Luis Cedar Espinosa was throwing made Kennedy uh, forget about his head. And he set him up for the body shot through a head shot. So big round for Espinosa to start. Landing 36 of 80 punches. 35 of those 36. Power shots. Those numbers come from CompuBox. Another left hook. McKinney's going to have to get something going here or risk being flooded early by the power shots of Espinosa. And right there, you saw how well Espinosa took Kennedy's right hand. It's because Espinosa's been a featherweight for a long time now. And Kennedy moving up in weight. Oh, and that right hand has frozen McKinney, and this is over. Over. A blistering right cross by Luisito Espinosa. And Kennedy McKinney was a sitting duck along the ropes. He took two or three more shots before Denkin got there to stop it. You remember about six or seven minutes ago, Jim, I said, you may be asking if he's too old three years from now or tonight. And your answer? It was tonight. A sudden, stunning, Second round knockout of Kennedy McKinney by Luisito Espinoza. And Roy, what a textbook job of setting up power shots to the head with hard punches to the body. Yeah, that's what he started out doing. He started out throwing the winging body shots first to make Kennedy let him get close enough to land those big head shots. You know, McKinney has always visualized fights and been very good at thinking about what might happen in a fight with an opponent. And he kept visualizing the left hand of Espinoza, and he was just wide open for the right. It was the right hand that got him, which no is, question. Which is why you never go into a fight looking for one punch to beat you. Always go ready for anything. And McKinney was so cut and dried in his fighter meeting with us yesterday, he had a very clear and categorical picture of what he thought was going to happen in the fight. It was very convincing the way he described it to us. But Larry makes exactly the right point. Because as McKinney tried to protect against the left hook, Espinoza blasted him out of there with right hands. So now the speculation turns to Luisito Espinoza versus Prince Nassim Hamed. Big fight, good fight. You can't imagine that the Prince's people are going to be desperately anxious to go ahead and make the fight off what they saw here, but if they do, give them credit for bravery and mark the date on your calendar. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Marty Denkin waves off the count of 10 following the knockdown and calls a halt to this bout at 47 seconds of round number two. The winner and still WBC featherweight champion of the world, Luisito Espinosa. So Espinoza, having moved here to the United States, now living in San Francisco, in search of bigger and better economic opportunity toward the toward what would appear to be the end of his boxing career coming up in the near future. But a big performance tonight sets up some possible major paydays in the future for the 126-pounder. Final punch stat numbers from CompuBox. And you can see that Kennedy McKinney never really got started in the fight, landing only 9 of 61. Luisito Espinoza blowing him away. 50 of 105 punches landed. The overwhelming majority of them, in fact, almost all of them, power shots. 
He connected at a 48% rate, and when you do that with right crosses and left hooks, you're going to knock your man out. That's what happened. Now let's go by, or let's go with uh, Larry Merchant and our interpreter, Ramon De Los Santos, as they talk to Espinoza. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Luis, who is now kissing his uh, bride, who is also his business manager and negotiates all of his contracts and did a very good job outside of the ring as you did inside of the ring tonight. manager and she did a good job. Um, you're coming. Oh, thank you very much uh, for Lan and uh, also to uh, my medical patient, Dan Kusin. Uh, thank you very much for promoting here. All right, you've thanked your promoter, you've done your job, but you did a better job for that four minutes during the fight. Did you, did you feel that you were just stronger than him, and is that the reason you came out so aggressively? I, I felt it, and it's right on the first punch. I knew right away I'm going to get this guy. He was looking for your left hook, which has always seemed to have been your best punch. Was he just wide open for those right hands? Hinahanap niya, inaabangan niya yung left hook mo. Hindi dumating yung left hook mo, puro right ang umabot. Kasi yung pag ano ang target ko talaga, right hook talaga. Pero left hook ko pinaabangan ko. I see, okay. He fakes with his left hook, but he is actually power punches the right hand. What does he see in the future for himself? Uh, anong nakikita mo sa susunod na mga laban mo? Uh, sa tingin ko, Adam, magiging approve ba? Na-approve ba? Oh, okay. Yeah, he's gonna improve some more in the next fight. Does he think that he will get a fight with Prince Hamed? Palagin uh, ba makakalabo mo si Prince Hamed? Uh, sa tingin ko, pagkailangan pag-aralan. <laughs> I think I have to study about that. I have to study him pretty good. Thank you very much. Congratulations again, Luis. Uh, uh, thank you very much to America Facet and Luis and to all the fans uh, here in the uh, States. Thank you to all the market. We'll see you again. Jim? All right, thanks, Larry. Got to teach Luisito to thank HBO when he does that. <laughs> so suppose we can make it. Uh, Prince Nassim Hamed against this guy, Luisito Espinoza. What do you think, Roy? Woo. <laughs> what a fight that would be. Uh, you don't so, have to pay to get in. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm very uh, grateful for that. Uh, I think the problem would be, can the prince deal with somebody who's patient enough to not go for all his antics, for all the things that he do to throw people off? This guy has been around for a little while. This guy is not going to go for that stuff. He's going to be right there waiting to counter when he does catch the prince off guard. So that would be a very interesting fight if the prince is willing to take that chance. Let's hope. It would be quite a war to see. All right, well, we'll have a final word on what... Oh, oh wait a minute. Larry's standing by with Kennedy McKinney. My fault. Larry? Jim, thank you. Kennedy? Yes. Was he just too big and strong for I you? I think so. I think that was the key. He was, uh, he, was a, he was a lot stronger than I anticipated. He was a lot stronger than I anticipated. You generally visualize fights, and in visualizing this fight, you kept thinking of the left hook and how you were going to bait him into something so that you could land the right hand, but it was his right hand that did the damage. No, not to be honest with you, it was the left hook that did the damage. He, uh, he had an exceptionally good left hook. I thought I had worked on trying to get away from that left hook, but I was wrong. I don't take anything away from the kid. He's just a tad bit bigger. I mean, this is my first fight at featherweight, and I lost, but you know, I'll be back at 22. I'm just not a featherweight. I'm not a full-blown featherweight. And, uh, I can't take anything away from Lucito. He fought a good fight. He did what he had to do to win. All right, let's take a look at the knockdowns and see what happened here in round one. Describe what you see. That was just a big looping right hand, it seemed, Kennedy. Well, well, in, 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 in my training on, on the tapes, I watched him. He didn't throw a right hand at all. He threw a, a pretty decent left hook. And that was my thing was to try to make sure don't let hit him with the hook. Don't hit me with the hook. But hey, I just got kind of careless, and I didn't. I over, I over est, underestimated his power uh, in, the, in the previous fight. And I'm a, feather, I'm a junior featherweight. I'm not a fully blown featherweight. I take nothing away from Lucito. It was a good fight, but he's a featherweight, and I'm a junior featherweight. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. You're a senior with us.